Hey everyone, what's up? Hope you're doing well. It has been a while again since I've posted any videos, but life's just been busy. But here's something that I've wanted to do for quite a while and I've had a ton of requests for it and that is kind of expanding on gem guides. It's actually been about a year since I've made gem guides like the five part series that I did a year ago. And so I've been wanting to do an update on that. Obviously there's been a ton of changes in game. Uh, so this is going to be a series that hopefully I actually do on a regular basis. It's not just going to be a one off. Okay, here's the gem guide. Uh, good luck, but I want to do an update every so often, maybe every month or so, talking about updates in game, what the current market's looking at, looking like, sorry, and um, just how in-game changes are affecting things, what the current prices are, all those sorts of things. So there's a lot of things that I want to go through because obviously it's been a full year since I've done gem guides, and so there's a lot of changes in game and things that are different and so we'll get into that lots of things I want to cover so that being said these videos are going to be probably a little bit longer than my normal video a little bit more in depth but hopefully really helpful for you to give you a really good idea of what's happening in market and what updates are doing in the game and also there's going to be another series that's going to be starting here right away just because of how life looks right now I haven't been making regular videos uh, but I do want to still make content somewhat regularly when time allows so there's going to be a new channel uh, within our discord server and it's going to be called hey rob mods uh, I'll just throw it up here at the top and so what I want you to do in there is type hey at rob mods so tag me and then write a question what I'm going to be doing is making basically a Q&A um, series going forward where I'll throw up your comment in the video so you'll see your name there and then I'll be answering questions uh, in game whether serious or not whether personal life or shop titans or whatever that looks like I don't really know yet but any questions that you may have things that I can clarify uh, things that you think other people may benefit from me answering and we'll be making a series going forward starting with uh, those questions as kind of the basis of that so I'm not needing to kind of make my own stuff because life's been super busy lately especially with three kids and a new career and all sorts of stuff which I'll talk about at a later date um, but for now, these are the two things that I'm going to be hopefully running with, and that is answering your questions in that new series, and then this series, um, which will be called State of the Market, and hopefully that'll be on a monthly or new update basis uh, going forward. So that's kind of what things will look like from here on out, uh, as far as I can tell. And hopefully I'll still be able to stream on a somewhat regular basis as well. It hasn't worked out lately to be Friday nights. Just had lots of stuff going on, but uh, I will continue to try to do so. So anyway, um, let's get into it. Hopefully you guys are all doing well. So as I said before, about a year ago, I made a five part gem guide. And so some of those things are still true and some of them have zero relevance whatsoever in the game. <laughs> That's the truth. So some things like the slow gems that take a long time but are really cheap that's still totally relevant still works it's absolutely still true in the game um in terms of gem prices what i talked about then gems are obviously a lot more expensive now because it's easier to make gold there's new tiers in the game lots of new stuff going on and um some things that i talked about like maybe you can make some gold by enchanting gear and selling the enchanted gear or whatever um, that's obviously no longer relevant at all either because you can't sell enchanted gear in the market so it no longer makes any sense right so let's talk about a few of the things that have been introduced into the game over the last year or some major ones at least over recent months that have changed a lot in terms of uh, what markets looking like the value of things and how that's affected gameplay overall um, so we'll get into those things specifically, and there, there's a bunch of thoughts that I have after that that I think um, can help both make gems and just be relevant in terms of understanding the game in its current state. So obviously fusion was a huge thing that got introduced into the game. So one of the biggest things before that we talked about tons was that when you looked at um, chest prices chests normally were really expensive in terms of price there was more keys than there was chests or at least people opening chests with gems and so obviously um the prices were like max like these were going for a million gold uh these were going for 500k there we go these were going for two and a half million so this was a really easy way to transfer gold to gems because you could buy these for two and a half million gold with a request and then put them up for gems and it was the simplest way to transfer over a lot of gold to gems with a really good ratio but now that fusions in the game you can then transfer a key to a chest 
and therefore there's not a limited amount of chests in the game. Uh, people can just create those whenever they want. And so chest prices have basically plummeted. This is the lowest prices. I think for all of these that's even allowed, it can't go lower than 20% of its base value. And so this is uh, just where we're at now. This is no longer viable whatsoever. A lot of other things that Fusion has changed is that obviously rare items are no longer okay. The only way to get a rare item is to craft it. You can now, you know, fuse an item multiple greens like this and turn it into a blue, right? And so you can essentially make a legendary item from, from five epics at whatever your specific percentage of uh, success or failure rate is. And so that has actually changed, I think, the prices when it relates to epics and legendaries where epics tend to be around the um, 10 to 20% price of what a legendary is because people can buy five epics and then fuse a legendary and have a 70% chance of that being successful and make uh, gems off of that. And so it's kind of changed the price structure a lot in market for those types of items. Obviously, there's some really valuable items in the fusion that people are able to make and they're only worth gems. So these sigils have been introduced in the game. Um, so let's actually talk about that now. So uh, tier 11 is obviously the newest tier that's been put into the game. It's the highest tier that's available. So tier 11, all tier 11 items have a sigil that needs to, or is a component for making that. So right now in the market, sigils are normally going for four gems. Sometimes during Caprice, they'll go up to five gems from the market. And if um, they're super cheap and maybe everyone's getting it from a reward from uh an event or something like that, then they might drop down to three gems. Okay. So those are pretty expensive because gems right now are, you know, upwards of seven to 800 K on average per gem. So these are costing like multiple millions for one. So it's kind of a weird place where tier 11 is now the most expensive in the game. But uh, other than mastering those items, like I have them all mastered, but actually crafting that item doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Because if, if you're needing to spend, let's say a sigil and components for that, this is gonna be costing you four gems, let's say, if you're getting a decent price for it, plus everything else. And this item is only worth like 2 million, less than 2 million. I guess if you surcharge, you're getting like three and a half. But even still, you're not making a ton of money, if any, on crafting a tier 11 item. And so, you know, at best, you're probably breaking even unless you're getting lucky with rare crafts and things like that. So crafting tier 11s actually doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless you're just mastering that item even looking at like an opulent item which we're going to talk about in a little bit as well um these opulent jewels are going for three gems a piece so this is going to cost you close to 20 gems to make one item that's only going to be worth 3.65 million seven and a half million surcharged um but it's not nearly worth 20 gems to make that item right so it's kind of just this weird place where a lot of the components for the highest value items in the game have to be fused and there's no other way to get them. And so they end up being a gems only type of thing. And so that lends itself to a couple interesting scenarios. Okay. So as you can see, like these are four or five gems each right now. And it's kind of an odd situation because this ends up being one of the primary ways to make gems in the game now. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. I'll get into that in a minute, but just keep that in mind that because of fusion, because of the most expensive items in the game, one of your best gem making methods is actually creating the items or at least the components for these um, so that other people can make them. So yeah. Opulence is another thing that's in the game now. So those weren't in the game when I made gem guides a year ago. And so now, Opulent items are obviously the most expensive. If you go to, let's say, tier 11 normal items, they're going to be sitting at like 8 mil or something. 7.6, 7 mil for these. So surcharge right now with my percentages, I get like 9.1 million from these wands. So it's interesting because I can make like a mil and a half profit by surcharging this, but then obviously there's something new introduced into the game where these are like 2,400 energy to surcharge. I only have... 8,000 right now. So a small talk gets me 800. So I still have to basically be getting two successful small talks in a row and discounting a tier 10 to be able to surcharge those opulent tier 11 items. And so now discounting tier 10s becomes normal and actually expected if you're going to be surcharging 
a tier 11 because it's going to be between like normally 1900 and 2400 energy depending on the value of that item um, so that gives a new dynamic as well where it's not just try to surcharge everything but it's understanding that because of rng if you want to be selling any tier 11s with any efficiency you will be probably discounting tier 9s tier 10s even with a couple successful small talks to get to the high enough energy for that to make sense okay the other thing that's interesting is collection log. So um, that's something that was just introduced a few months ago, whatever it was. And so obviously you can donate any item to your collection log um, to basically fill that up. And then once you've finished that and it turns gold, then you can have your heroes wear that piece. Um, so Or it looks like they're wearing it anyways so for more of a cosmetic feel right if that hero can wear that type so it's a really cool addition to the game and obviously it actually added a lot of value for legendaries and things like that so let's talk about that really quick um so in order to make a sigil i need a blue or better tier six or better item if i want to be making ascension shards out of my blueprint scrolls i need a tier eight or better blue or better item for opulent jewels i need a tier nine or better green or better item and so what this has done in the game is really interesting where actually tier six blues have become the best money in the game for people who aren't who are like mid-game players because these items have been selling for like seven million on average like let's say you get to tier eights and you can actually sell it for seven million that's been like a, a normal price for a long time it's been dropping recently because they recently made a change where it's twice as easy to make sigils it's twice as fast and you only need half the amount of items that you did previously for the same number of sigils so that's changed a little bit but even if you go to flawless tier six there's going to be no gold offers here whatsoever the lowest gem offer is probably either going to be five or seven it looks like most of them are seven and so any players who are mid game i'd say stick with tier six only make tier six items as fast as you can and if you're getting blue or better you can either sell it for seven gems or six gems or whatever or sell it for max gold and in doing this you can save up for your expansions your crafting slots your market slots whatever that looks like right so here's tier seven normally there's no gold offers here either and it's going to be sitting around seven gems at the lowest here as well so a couple of them look like they were six tier eight is where you're going to be finding your gold offers for the first time because um, most tier sevens are not going to be able to sit at four million or, or more uh, for a gold offer because it's capped at 10 times value right and so this is going to be the first time you're going to find gold offers so four and a half million is the cheapest that you can find in terms of buying for gold to make a sigil so as you can see this becomes really interesting where before fusion came out before tier 11 and sigils were in the game these were probably sitting at like a million million and a half and all of a sudden that's tripled or before you couldn't find these for less than seven million like if we go to tier nine these were all sitting at seven million or more and all of these enchants are still sitting right around seven million and have been for months like since this came out and so even crafting these you know that they're going to sell for max value where before this came out you might have been able to find blue tier 9 enchants for less than 7 million but now it's pretty much impossible so if we go down here we may find things for you know in the 5 million range uh, occasionally in the 4 million range but very rarely and so now it's like crafting tier 6s quickly and hoping for blues or better to be able to sell for gems and then even using those gems to get gold if, if that's what you really want to do honestly almost makes more sense than doing tier nines and you're going to be making the same amount of gold you know but it's just going to take longer to craft those things like it it really does give a leg up for lower players or mid-range players where their crafts very early on like once they hit the tier six range are actually going to be worth just as much as tier nine crafts in a way if you know how to how to transfer your gems into gold so it's really interesting many many times in videos i've said okay enchantments are basically your best friend especially free to play this is going to be the only thing that's going to be worth a ton of gems when it comes to legendaries everything else is a free to play item they're not best in slot nobody's going to be paying that much gold it doesn't matter that much for your heroes right but now I think that's actually changing quite a bit. Like, as you can see, 129 gems for a legendary, that seems ridiculous. Like, the highest one in this whole thing is 248. Whereas for the longest time, it's probably because these have been out forever and people have equipped their heroes properly by now. But 
these used to be like five, six, seven hundred gems for a legendary, and now they're sitting around two hundred for a legendary of the best enchants in the game. Like that's pretty crazy. It's way different than it was before. And some of these epics have been sitting like less than thirty. There you go, like in the 20s even, 21 gems for an epic tier 9. Like these used to be sitting at 50, 60, 70, 80 gems, things like that. And so now they're way lower in price. So these have actually been gradually declining. But because of collection log and people needing to fill their slots of collection log with legendaries, for example. Like let's go random, tier 7 legendary. I look at it. Okay, 22 gems, that's pretty cheap, right? But if I go to a tier 5 legendary, 58 gems. And a lot of these, like, people are going to be crafting the tier 7 a ton, just hoping for their flawless and their epic so they can sell that for gems. So this is going to be made a ton. But if you go down to tier 5, no one's going to be crafting tier 5 stuff because you're not having the chance of getting tier 6 and above, which is what people need right now. So these tend to be a lot higher gem value. Even something like this is probably going to be a really high gem value, 212, because it's a chest item, so less people have it. No one's crafting a ton of these things. And so somehow, the gem value on low tier, like tier 5 and below, like epic and legendary stuff, becomes super high because no one's making that stuff, yet there's a demand for it. Like, before Collection Log came out, who wants a legendary Molten Volge? No one. Because it doesn't matter, no one's ever going to put that on their hero. It's like a terrible item. But now, because collection logs here, really low tier, high rarity stuff is now worth a lot. And and that's just one single example. But let's just go to like a random uh, chest item over here. Like this, for example. I know that this is probably going to be like a crazy amount of gems. It's still tier 6, but it's a pack item. Normally, this is going to be super low value because no one needs that for their hero. But because it's not many people have this blueprint and people are going to want it to fill their collection log and there's going to be very few of these available in the game, it's going to be worth a lot of gems. Like, it seems counterintuitive, and before these changes in game, it never really would have mattered that much. But now, all of a sudden, a tier 5 chest item is going to be worth over 100 gems, whereas before it might have been worth 10 gems, right? So I think this also gives a leg up for mid-game players, where if they're crafting random chest items that they're getting, and they all of a sudden craft a legendary, instead of it being like, oh, sweet, I got 10 gems, now it's like, wow, I have 200 gems in my pocket, right? And Collection Log has allowed the value of items that normally wouldn't be valuable to all of a sudden hold value. And in the past, I had said when I was talking through guides and stuff like get rid of all your legendary low level stuff you're you're clogging up your inventory it's all worthless it's stupid like don't keep that stuff and now you might want to keep those items for your own collection log you might want to be selling those gradually in the market because people are paying more for it and and it's not like okay I have this random tier three tier four legendary item that's not has has no value and you're just keeping it in your inventory for no reason now all of a sudden that thing's worth 120 gems on the market right so what i was saying about um enchants now being the only good crafting option for free to play which i think was true before now i honestly think that that's no longer true and pretty much any other track can work any other item types can work. Because legendaries and epics are going to remain valuable for items because of collection log, because you're still looking for those tier 6 and above, blue and above items that are going to be worth gems, going to be worth max gold, maybe at 5, 6, 7 million gold. Now it's it almost makes more sense to be sticking with a four different types of items hoping for chest items hoping for those rare crafts that are going to be worth just as many gems as the best enchants in the game because they're going to be more rare and so now i don't think that i would i would remain with with my statement before i think that it would change before i said very specifically if you were free to play enchants are going to be your best bet for crafting long term and that should be your focus because no best in slot items, they're not going to be valuable. Now I would say you can kind of do whatever you want in terms of what you decide to craft, whatever makes sense for you, because you're still going to be getting a high amount of value from anything tier 6 and above. And they may still even be more valuable than the items. Like, I'm not saying that they're super valuable. Like, if we go legendary tier 10 items, they're still going to be 
low value items, right? Like 54 gems for a tier 10 legendary, it seems really low. And even before collection log, all of these things were like below 100 gems even, right? But now, as you can see, like even some of the tier 10 normal items are sitting at 200. People aren't buying this because it's good for their hero. People are buying those items because they need it for collection log. And there's not very many of these available in the game. Like there never would have been this normal item for almost 300 gems before, but now all of a sudden it's valuable and it's worth more than any of the best enchants in the game. And it's tier 10. It's not even tier 11, right? So I, I honestly think that it's worthwhile considering not just dead focused on elements and spirits, but just saying, hey, I'm going to craft what I like. If you focus on four item tracks instead of just enchants, then you still have like the the uh, energy discount on those as well. So as you can see, if you get 15 stars in anything, the surcharge energy cost is minus 10 for 10%. I still think that that's the most important thing in terms of ascends and even getting your 15 stars in every single line from the beginning, 15 stars, 15 stars, um, for everything should be one of your first priorities because then you can sell more efficiently in your shop. And if you don't have a ton of bins out, which you shouldn't, and you're focusing on energy, then it'll just make being profitable and selling through things much, much easier. Energy is king. Having as few bins out as possible makes the most sense. I would still say before level 60, you should have two of each tier one, one of each tier two, and that's it. Focus energy. When you hit level 60, you should be saving 4,000 or 9,000 gems. You should either be double or triple expanding. Uh, and then you're going into your tier eight after level 60. You should have three of each tier one, two of each tier two, and beginning with like two to three of each tier three resource. And then gradually when you get your additional furniture slots, as you can see here, you can have up to 80. You're, once you get your ninth expand, you'll have 72. And then you'll have to get the, the following eight with only gems uh, from that point on. And that costs a lot. It's like 15,250 total. So that takes a lot more time. And I think as you go past 72 slots, then you can start adding on your fourth and your fifth of your tier three resources. But until that point, I think a three, two, three is fine. Pre-level 60, like I said, two, one, zero, and you stop at tier seven, because like I said, those items are just as valuable as anything tier eight and above. And sticking there uh, makes the most sense. You can save gems and just power your way through the mid game. That's gonna be your best bet still. I know that's a lot of information, but hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so the other thing that I think is really important to note is generally gem prices. So I, I made a video recently about transferring gold to gems or transferring gems to gold and what you're going to be looking like. We found that you could actually consistently make a million gold per gem if you're transferring. So check this out. If we go epic... There we go. Epic tier 11. So you can buy this for 94 gems. And if you have the gold value increase, some of you will, some of you won't. And the king buys this item, the king will pay you 112.5 million for this. So that's like 1.2 million per gem if you're selling this to the king. And so if you want to transfer your gems into gold, the easiest way to do that is buying really high tier. You don't have to go tier 11. We could even look at tier 10 stuff. Um, and this, for example, is 76 gems for 62 million gold. Like you can do this once per day, sell to the king, make sure this is your only rare item that's available on your shelf. The king will buy it 100% of the time and will pay you 62 million as long as you have that, um, that item that doubles the value of that uh, from the event. And so this is what we found as the best option for you to be transferring uh, your gems into gold. Now, on the other hand, transferring um, gold to gems gets a little bit worse because uh, the ratios definitely are not as good as they were before. So one of the things that was standard other than chess for a really long time was tier nine enchant. So, excuse me, if we look at that now, these are sitting around 7 million, sells for 10 gems. I've sold these for 10 gems lots. They do sell eventually. I know some of them are at nine, but let's say you sell for 10 gems, you're getting eight gems after tax. So eight gems for 7 million is like a really bad ratio, like eight, 900 K, right? per gem. And honestly, that's pretty standard. Like if you're getting 500 K, um, or if you're getting a gem for 500 K gold right now in market, that's an amazing deal. And you should do that instantly. If you're getting a million or one gem for a million gold, that's a bad deal. But if you're sitting around seven to 800 K that's average, that's normal now 
for transferring your gold into gems. And so, you know, before when I was talking, I, I'd probably save like 500 K is normal and or 400 K is normal, whatever. 100 K is a really good deal. 200 K is a good deal. And if you can get anything less than that, you know, you're off to the races. But that's been changing over time, I think, because people have really caught on to Polonia. So let me explain that for a second. And I still think that Polonia is the most important thing in this entire game when it comes to making money, okay? So 50% chance to steal valuable items from monsters. And so she can steal, when she's max, up to 20 items from a quest. Now, if you... Uh, get her going with a team of tricksters. So that's when you use a Titan soul on a thief. Um, these tricksters will add with their special skill a 3% chance to steal and plus two max items. So you have a 59% chance of stealing an item from an enemy every single quest and a and 26 items total if you're sending uh, her with three tricksters like this. This is my A team Polonia. And then I also have this as my B team Polonia, my red shirts and my blue shirts. Okay, so I have six tricksters total. They're going an hour and a half at a time with Polonia and they're guaranteeing it's like a 99.96% of the time, judging by my spreadsheets, you can look up my Polonia guides if you want and do this for yourself. But uh, if if I'm sending her to Bleak Spire Heart or Bleak Spire Easy, which is what I'm doing, every hour and a half, I'm able to get a guaranteed 26 free tier 10 items every single time. I've never not got tier 10 items, and I've also never got tier 11 items, which is interesting. Um, but think about that. If those items, tier 10s, like these, for example, I, I could buy this from market for like, it's normally around 900k, but like if I'm able to surcharge some of the items, discount some of the items, um, normally I'm making like a million minimum from each item. Normally it's going to be quite a bit better than that, but let's just say a minimum of a million. So 26 million gold every hour and a half for free, plus all the other quests, plus all the sales, plus everything I'm crafting or fusing or whatever. And so in this way, I'm I'm able to make hundreds of millions of gold for free every day just by having um, Polonia with tricksters going. So what that means is that people have a crazy amount of gold. Like if I have feathers available and I'm using them, I can easily clear a billion gold profit per day. And I'm not exaggerating that at all. And so if I'm able to make that amount of money, me transferring that amount of gold into gems whenever I want to, if I can find a good ratio and, and it makes sense for me to do it with the way that I've been doing it in market, um, I can make a couple thousand gems, you know? Like, for example, I started the 100k gem challenge. As of this recording, it's been exactly 20 days since I've started the 100k gem challenge, and I'm already up to 42,000 gems, and I think I was at, what, like 15,000 or something when I started that. So I've been able to clear more than 1,000 gems a day just by playing, by running Polonia, by making a ton of gold, by transferring gold to gems, by using fusion to make the items that are worth gems, and just playing a lot, fusing a lot, using all my crafting slots, using everything to my advantage, using my market slots for what I'm trying to do. I'm experimenting with this right now. Sometimes it goes well, sometimes not, but I'm messing around with things. I'm fusing a lot. I'm transferring. I'm using my market slots, and I'm using six tricksters all the time and i've also used like 30 feathers as well so with that in mind you just need to understand that there's a lot of gold coming into the game through those means and through those items what becomes interesting then is that tier 10 items in the market if you look normal tier 10 and we go to their cheapest ones look at this 800k and so this is barely over base value and this is often and and during tower these are going to be way under base value like 100k below base value okay so if i'm able to surcharge this look at that it's like 700k profit and because i have eight percent extra um from my ascensions i'm making even more than that so even if i'm buying one of these small talk success um, discount and then surcharging another one, I'm still making like 400k on every transaction. So I don't want to keep grabbing this. I know I've been talking about it for a while, but just want to make it clear that like, there's a lot more gold in the game and people um, transferring their gold to gems will happen at a lot less efficient rates because people don't mind because they're able to make a billion gold in a day. Okay.
The other thing I want to mention is something that I've I've talked about a lot, and that is rushing net worth, something that I really enjoyed for a long time. As many of you know, I was top 15 for like six months in terms of net worth, not even close to that now. As you can see, I'm 227th in the world in net worth, and I haven't been working on it much at all. But in order to get in the top 100 right now, as of recording, it's 750 billion. Okay, so I'm, I'm nowhere close to that, and I don't think I ever will be. I don't have the time to do it, nor the <laughs> motivation to be playing that much, but I have experimented with it. So as I showed you previously, if you go to tier 11s in the market, and you look at the most expensive ones, they're going to be selling for like 9.1 million. This is 9.1 for me with my uh, additional ascension percentages. This one's just over 9.05 million, I think. So anyway, um, I can sell these, make profit, and by discounting tier 10s, um, stocking my shop with tier 10s and I was also enchanting these as well but by doing that with no event on nothing special no customer frenzy no nothing you are able to make over 1 billion per hour with max energy so I was fully stocked with enchanted pistols and enchanted wands I have 8% extra lots of people have like 20% extra so they're able to do it even faster than I am but Selling these, discounting tier 10s, going as quickly as possible, you can make a billion uh, net worth per hour. So with that being said, 750 billion, I mean, obviously, I'm like 260 something billion away. So I'm like way off the pace. But that's 260 hours of straight gameplay, like focus selling as quickly as possible in shop, and then I would be in the top 100, right? So people who are doing net worth right now, essentially, at max efficiency, you can divide their net worth by a billion per hour and if you had max energy max efficiency good ascensions like you're rolling okay and you're dead focused this would take 483 hours at max efficiency right now in game as of today as of october okay so just wanted to throw that out there as well because it's something that i've tested and that's what's possible with the ascensions that i have right now okay i have eight percent extra right now these four um, gun, wand, and crossbow are all done, and then stone as well. So that's my 8%. So let me sum this up. I, I think that there's honestly like only a couple of ways right now that's still really good for making, um, making gems. Okay. So let me talk through the options that I see as still available, and then we'll, we'll finish the video there. Okay. So the first one is low level or low tier normal items that don't have a gold or a gem price. Okay, so look at this. There's no gold price on this and there's 17 of these in the market. So I know that I could buy 17 of these at 4.4K. I could put those up and my gem offer would be the only gem offer that's available and I can buy this out completely. So what that means is if a champion comes in and asks a, a new player, brand new player for an for seven Elmwood bows or something in exchange for three coins for that hero, right? Or for that champion. Sorry, this is just buying really slow. I don't know why it's been so slow for me. So I just bought every single bow. If I go to market now and I list those bows, there's none in the market right now. And I'm going to go two gems. These are probably going to sell within a couple of hours for 17 gems. So I just made 17 gems at 4K a piece. Okay. And this will happen all the time. You can search for this. Let's just go tier two, tier three again. So this is a pack item. Most likely those aren't going to sell quickly. They may sell eventually, but most heroes aren't going to be asking for that item because the, the champion can't ask for the item if you can't make it, okay? Um, but any normal item, like one that's just in your book that's free to play, they can ask for, and people are going to pay gems for that eventually. So all of these are pack items. As you can see, look, no gold offers. If anyone wants these, they're going to be paying two gems a piece. And, and you'll see this very often, okay? A lot of these will sell pretty quickly just for gems because a new player is not going to want to pay two and a half times or five times or ten times, you know, whatever whatever the value is. They're going to say, I don't want to spend that much gold for this. I'll spend two gems because they don't understand the value of that, okay? And guys, I'm not just saying this is like a trick or whatever. I've literally done this consistently for two years and it's worked the entire time. Now on the high end, there might be a three or a four gem value, and you could buy these up and put them for two gems. Now these are both pack items as well, so I wouldn't recommend those, but you can check this every once in a while and quite often find items that there's no gem offer for, put them up for gems, be the only one that's available for two gems. Like this one, for example, Witch Hat, there's no two gem offer. This is over double. If I bought 
my max stack right now is what 34 i could buy 34 of these put them up for two gems each and i'm telling you within 24 hours you would have 34 gems for 50k a piece and this works consistently it has for two years and it probably will continue to do so the more people that do it obviously the slower it's going to be you can also go through here and check see how it says 100 plus that's how many of them are in the market but often you might be able to go through here and just see oh man there's only 50 of these left in the market which means there's not very many gem offers in front of me i'm not seeing any right now there's not very many gem offers in front of me, which means if, even if I put them up, maybe I'm not first in line, but I'm close to it. So it's still worth putting them in the market, knowing that there's not very many available there and you may be the first one in line or or close to it right so this one for example there's only 37 so you could buy those up and know that you're not too far down the line in terms of selling for gems um so i think that's still a viable option obviously it's slow but they're inexpensive gems and it works over time if you've got the market slots and the patience for it okay um, another thing that we tried for a really long time is doing something similar to this um, but just buying up chests let's say you buy up a bunch of limestone chests you put them up for two gems a piece and you just leave them in market let's say you put them in for two days and your timer expires if you press relist you keep your place in line so technically at that point you've been in for two days and one minute and that's going to continue and then you get to four days press relist you'll be in for four days and one minute and that continues okay so you keep your place in line when you press relist so don't cancel and put it up again press relist these limestone chests take about four days right now between four and five days to sell I've tested them. So you could buy these for 159K, put these 31 up, and within four days, I'm gonna have 31 gems. Obviously, that's incredibly slow. It's painful, I know. But every five days, if I had you know all, all eight of my slots going at 59 each or whatever, um, I could have six times, so almost 500 gems every four days okay, at 150k a piece or whatever. So there's an example that Bo just sold. So so that's an option for you to do as well. I've tried components. So for example, if we go here to um, components, let's go to these ones. So see how there's no gold value for these. So if somebody needs some of these shrooms, they may pay these gems for it. And so some of these really low ones should go through gem prices or gem offers a little bit quicker. Um, I've tried these as well. Sometimes they've taken up to a week to sell. Obviously, they're basically free, but they've taken a week to sell for two gems. Sometimes they've been faster than that. We've tested different ones. The shortest was like three days, but some of those might work as well for cheap, really slow gems, okay? The other one is mass crafting tier sixes and selling them for gems. Um, I think that that can definitely work especially if you have like your tier six items ascended maybe you find four tier six items you ascend all of them and you just craft those in mass okay and then any any blues or purples or legendaries you just sell for gems and that's how you can make gems quickly okay the other thing like you can see that i'm doing is i'm buying green tier sixes this is probably going to ruin this for me forever saying it in this video but you could buy green tier sixes <clears throat> fuse them into blues and sell those for gems okay obviously i'm using these to make sigils for myself right now to then sell for gems it's a bit of a process and this still costs me like five six hundred k per gem so it's not like i'm just printing gems right now it's still expensive but like i said i can make that money with polonia so it's not a big deal um so mass crafting tier six tier seven type of items and selling those for gems i think uh makes sense the other thing uh maybe for higher level players is uh looking at crafting like let's say opulent jewels i made thousands of opulent jewels these right now 53k so it's let's say 500k for this green tier 9 is pretty cheap you can usually get one of those for like 700k so you're sitting at 1.2 million these are going to be like uh 2.8 so let's say 4 million total for two opulent jewels those are going to sell for six gems so you can make gems that way these used to be like four gems each but now that's changed the other thing is that with the new lost city of gold they're now implementing opulent chests which is brand new to the game so maybe i'll talk about what effect that has um later on like in the next time i, I make one of these longer videos but this is the new opulent chest 
Uh, the way that these came into the game was if you didn't claim the rewards from Lost City last time and you waited to claim your rewards, the update came out on the following Tuesday and then people claimed the rewards after this and Opulent Chest was part of those rewards. I didn't do it. I didn't know that that was going to happen. Um, there was no way for anyone to know, but some people got them. So that's how they're in the game. They shouldn't be in the game, but it is what it is, okay? But you should be able to fuse an Opulent Chest now, like combining Golden Chest into Opulence from what I understand. And so if that's the case... Gold and chest may still remain valuable. These are at five gems now. For the longest time, these were sitting at like nine to 12 gems. Um, but if you can fuse these golden chests into opulence, that may be a brand new fusion tactic to make gems as well. Obviously, we don't know what that's going to settle at, but that'll be known, you know, in the future anyways. So, so that's definitely something to keep your eye on because this will likely be a big factor going forward because right now you could request these Lux chests now they were golden but luxurious chests for 2.5 million sell for five gems get four after and you're getting a decent ratio there although it just took quite a while to both request and sell them so it wasn't fantastic but but that was an option in the past as well for transferring. I think that that's really the only options that I see as viable for making gems consistently right now. Getting cheap, slow gems from the market, crafting masses of, of you know, tier six, tier seven stuff, or even like crafting a lot of like your tier nine, tier 10 stuff. You craft a legendary, you sell it for three, 400 gems. Like, obviously that's a really good option. Um, don't get me wrong, but I'm just thinking like a mid-range player, how are they going to get gems for their expands and things like that? Um, anyone who's farther along in the game is going to have other methods and, and it's going to be easier. Obviously, the average player is not going to be able to make over a thousand gems a day like I am. It's just not viable, but I'm trying to give good options, okay? The other thing is going to be fusing, making those items yourself, um, looking for the items in the game that are only available for gems, and trying to request those for gold or make them yourself and sell them for gems, and um, otherwise just having a ton of gold and being able to use that to transfer into gems by buying an item for gold and selling it back in the market for gems. But of course, that's way, way more expensive. So those are all the things I had on my list, all the things that I wanted to talk about in terms of current market. I hope that this doesn't uh, put me in a rough spot when it comes to trying to make the last uh, 57,000 gems, but probably I'll have to find out some new stuff, but that's okay. That's part of the game. So Anyway, guys, I hope this helps. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gives you some clarity. If you have watched this far in the video, you are a hero. Good for you. Uh, let me know in the comments. That'd be amazing. Make sure you check out our Discord. Make sure you ask some questions in there for the new series. And hopefully I will be back in a month or two with another installment of uh, this series. And hopefully it'll be kind of a staple of the channel going forward as I'm busier and not going to be putting out content all the time but can still keep you up to date on kind of what's going on in game so that's it for this one thank you guys so much for watching hope you're doing well much love and uh i'll talk to y'all soon peace out